Hello, this is Michael Pirelli from Constep, and welcome to 10 to 5, where we'll learn about a specific topic, complete with 5 new ideas in 10 minutes or less. During this installment of 10 to 5, we will explore ways to create effective problem statements. Our presenter today is Bill Kaplan, only consultant from Constep. Bill, the floor is yours. Take it away. Thanks, Mike. A key component to our problem-solving methodology is the problem statement. Numerous times I've worked with clients with unclear, incomplete, or ineffective problem statements. And any project is doomed from the start without a good solid problem statement. I think every one of us has been asked to solve a problem. The big question is, do we really understand the problem in front of us? Problems are usually given to the person who we think has the answer. And what we find is that there are always more questions than answers. It starts to become clear very quickly that we don't have an effective problem statement. Let's take a look at how we write a problem statement. The problem statement should describe the unfavorable condition that prevents the goal or objective from being achieved. The problem is the difference between the desired expectation and the actual situation. Einstein is quoted as saying, if I had only one hour to save the world, I'd spend 55 minutes defining the problem and five minutes finding a solution. Most problem statements that I have seen prepared by teams or individuals represent the problem itself. Just ineffective problem statements. Most of us make many decisions every day. To make that decision we're recognizing that a problem exists. As an example, uh, on your drive to work you might encounter heavy traffic. And so we readjust, we, we take an alternate route. We're all continuously solving problems. But when it comes to the more complex problems in our work environment, the best approach is to construct a problem statement. The problem statements can either be formal or informal. In a formal sense, they're part of a team charter. In an informal sense, it could be a standalone statement of the unfavorable condition. But in all cases, it should be a written or documented problem statement. Constructing the problem statement is the key component to the PDCA, the Plan, Do, Check, Act problem solving methodology, usually referred to as the Deming cycle. The planning phase of PDCA or PDSA, Plan, Do, Study, Act, requires that we first describe the problem, select a team, collect data, analyze the data, and develop a solution set. Deming is quoted as saying, if you don't know how to ask the right questions, you discover nothing. Before the problem statement can be written, you must first identify and prioritize the problems in front of you. The written statement must have impact. The statement itself needs to get everyone's attention. There are four levels that we see within organizations. We can have system level problems. We can have value stream level problems, process level problems, or task level problems. This slide describes five key points in writing the problem statement. First, we must describe the unsatisfactory condition. The statement itself needs to be simple. It can be bullet points. It doesn't need to be a book. We have to make sure that it has impact. We have to make sure that it's understandable to all readers. And then if we're going to really get everyone's attention, we want to make the wording engaging. Here's an example. We keep missing product shipments. Not too engaging. How about if we rewrite that as, 
Our customer commitments and relationships are being jeopardized due to our inability to effectively ship product on time. The problem statement should answer these questions. Who is affected? What are the negative impacts? Where is it happening? And when does it happen? We should not try and answer the question why because it tends to put a solution into the problem statement. There are three common mistakes that you'll want to avoid in writing a problem statement. The first one is stating the solution in the problem statement. Second one, too large of a problem. And the third one, too vague of a problem. Let me share an example with you. Stating the solution in the problem statement. Here's a bad example. The toast is burnt. We need to buy a new toaster. A better problem statement might read, we need to investigate why the toast is burnt. Second example, too large of a problem statement. Breakfast takes too long to prepare. Not a great problem statement. A better way of saying that is, the old toaster takes over five minutes to warm up. Kind of narrows it down a bit. And then the third example, too vague of a problem statement. No one likes the breakfast. It's pretty vague. A better way is to say that guests don't like to get burnt toast. To summarize, effective problem statements need to include an understanding of the condition that prevents the goal or objective from being achieved, and we already spoke to this point, focusing on the area of greatest impact. We spoke on this one a little bit too, but let's ensure that uh, as an organization that, that we're working on problems that are gonna that are gonna truly make our organization better. And then we need to ensure the inclusion of the following metrics and targets. The measurements that need to be in place need to give us that starting or create that baseline for us so that when we complete our, uh, our analysis, we have a good understanding of whether or not uh, we've made some improvements. Beginning and endpoints help to uh, establish the scope of the project that we're working on. And the timeline lets us understand the resource effort that's going to be required to solve this problem. Focusing on all these points will help you to achieve your target of creating an effective problem statement. Thanks, Bill. We hope you enjoyed this 10 to 5. Please don't forget to download the checklist for this program. Each checklist contains five new ideas regarding the presented topic. You can also view this and other 10 to 5s anytime by visiting www.constep.org. Be sure to check back regularly as new 10 to 5s are added often. Thanks again for watching, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.